Has this ever happened to you? You start playing a new video game from your backlog, and at first, you're enticed by the idea of playing this game, wondering what adventures will be in store for you and what fun you'll have. But as time goes on, you're not having as much fun as you thought you would. You start to realize that maybe the game isn't that good, or maybe it just isn't for you. In any case, you're not enjoying yourself. But at this point, you're already a decent chunk of the way through the game. Perhaps you've spent 5 hours, 10 hours, or maybe 30 hours playing it, but you aren't having fun anymore. At this point, you have two options. Finish what you've started and stick it out until the end of the game, or abandon it and move on to the next one. Since you've already put some time into this game, you think, I may as well finish it, even if the experience isn't very fun. So, several hours later you finish that game. Credits roll, and you can finally tick it off your list. But was it worth playing until the end? You don't feel very happy, because you've just spent some valuable time of your life playing a game that was maybe a 3 out of 5 at best. In this video, I'll be talking about some of my experiences with games that I didn't really want to finish, and why we feel the need to complete things as humans. Recently, I think I've played more mid-games than usual, you know what I mean? I don't like to say that, but that's the best way I can think of describing them. Games that are just okay, and don't really stand out. And I'm not just depressed, okay, I've played some incredible games this year as well. Disco Elysium, Hi-Fi Rush, Bloodstained, Rollerdrome. But I want to play more games like that. So in my quest for the next great game, I have to sift through some average ones, like Dying Light the following. Now this is technically a DLC to Dying Light but it's super massive and has its own story that I'm counting it as a game. And this isn't a full review of the following, okay? I'm just gonna talk about what I didn't like. Now, I really liked the main game, and I was excited for a while to play this DLC because I wanted to know how the tale of Kyle Crane continues. The DLC continues from the original Dying Light, except this time you break out of the city into the countryside, and you meet this following called the Children of the Sun. One of the most glaring problems is that Dying Light to me was always a 50-50 parkour slash zombie game. And in fact, one of the things I didn't like about the main game was I didn't think the parkour aspect was strong enough. But this DLC focused even less on the parkour. It's set in the open countryside, which is literally the worst possible environment they could choose for a parkour game. And you have the grappling hook now, so the small sections of crafted parkour that they put in the missions can usually be skipped entirely. You even get a buggy in the DLC to drive around in because free running around the world would take too long. The driving is kind of fun sometimes, but it goes completely against what I thought the game was originally meant to be. It feels like Just Cause 3 was in first person and also there were zombies. What's more, to progress the main story, you literally have to just do a bunch of side quests for the cult to raise your trust level with them, and that's pretty lame. After just a couple of hours of playing the DLC, I was like, meh, and I left it for about a month or so while I played some new releases. But it stayed in my mind, I knew that I had left it unfinished, incomplete. So I came back to it, and I have beaten it now. Near the end, it did get a bit better and was kind of fun, but the experience was just okay. I spent around 10 hours playing this game and I'm not sure if it was even worth my time. Was it worth it for me to pick it back up, or should I have left it abandoned after I played for a couple of hours? A few days before I finished the following, I completed my playthrough of The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. I've played through several of the 2D Zelda games now from the 3DS Virtual Console. Oracle of Ages is especially unique because you can link your game to the completed file from Oracle of Seasons. You get to keep certain items, and the story will change in certain ways. I enjoyed Seasons, but this game felt a lot more frustrating to me. Some of the puzzles were too obscure, the time travel mechanic was annoying, and halfway through I just started using a walkthrough because I didn't want to waste my time bumbling around like a buffoon. I felt like Oracle of Seasons was the superior game. It had a whole cool other realm with this race of subrosian people, instead of the normal past and present, which we've already seen in 2D Zelda games before. You could also change between four seasons, and in general, I just thought that game was more fun. I didn't hate Oracle of Ages, but again, I didn't feel the compulsion to beat it. I kind of forced myself to, so I could say it was done, and I was closer to reaching my goal of eventually completing every mainline Zelda game. A mission that I set myself a couple of years ago. It did feel good to tick this entry off the list, but once again, I was left thinking. 
I just spent 20 hours playing this game even though overall I didn't like it. So why? These two games simply didn't really stand out to me. They didn't make me excited to come back for more, and sometimes I didn't even particularly want to keep playing. But I did. I persevered until the end. And then I went on backlogged and I rated the following a 3 out of 5, and Oracle of Ages a 2.5 stars out of 5. Middle of the road, okay games. And after logging them, I wonder, why did I bother finishing them? If they're just gonna leave a sour taste in my mouth, then what was the point? I knew much earlier into the games that I wasn't really having fun. I could have stopped then. If I had dropped the game, I could have potentially spent that time playing a 5 out of 5 game instead. I could be playing my next favorite game. 20 hours is a long time, so what am I doing at wasting it on this Zelda game? Well, one reason could be the sunk cost fallacy, the thought that I've already put some time into it, and probably put money into this game, so I may as well keep going as to not waste it. But I don't think this was the case for me. One possible cause for this is the Zygonic effect. I first heard about this psychological theory in Daryl Talks Games' video about clearing his backlog. So check his video out too, I'll put the link in the description. It's a really good video. I'll explain what the Zygonic effect is, and how it relates to us finishing games. In 1927, a psychological study was published by Bloomer Zygonic, who concluded that humans will remember unfinished tasks much easier than they will remember tasks they have completed. To prove her theory, she got participants to do several tasks. She interrupted one group of participants before they had finished, telling them to move on to the next one. Later, both groups were asked to recall what tasks they had been given earlier. Zygonic found that participants were twice as likely to remember the unfinished task than the completed ones. Her original hypothesis was that having these incomplete tasks causes psychic tension, which makes us more likely to remember it. And once we've completed the task, it can be released from our memory. There are a few applications in real life to this, such as how waiters can remember large orders so long as the order is still in the process of being served, and afterwards promptly forget the order. Another example can be seen in studying. Educators recommend that you take breaks during study sessions, believing that it'll help you memorize a concept if the task is interrupted. So basically, when you start a new game and then stop playing after a couple of hours, you're creating an unfinished task in your brain. It's gonna spur the psychic tension, which compels you to finish the task, and until you finish it, a small section of your brain is gonna be occupied by the thought of that one game that you never quite beat. The game you forgot about a long time ago, or dropped for seemingly no reason and left it for too long to pick up again. It's the same reason why many of us feel the need to fully explore each room in a video game, or search every crevice in an area so we don't miss any loot. We don't want to leave any task unfinished. Imagine a set of two unexplored hallways in a video game. You walk down the right hallway, but you get stuck in a cutscene. You'll be left feeling discontent because you feel like the task of exploring has been left incomplete. Even if there was nothing in the left hallway, now you have an itch in your brain that you can't scratch. And that is the Zygonic effect in action. But what about when the game is bad? When you're not even sure if you're enjoying your time, like in my case with Zelda and the following. Surely one would feel no remorse for abandoning a game like that. I think it was another example of the Zygonic effect. I felt like it was a task that I had left incomplete. Even though the games themselves were not the best experience, I felt like I had to complete them for a couple of reasons. Firstly, psychologist Perry Buffington stated in regard to the Zygonic effect that people tend to remember negative experiences and feelings longer than positive ones. This is probably why I still felt compelled to beat these games, even though I wasn't having too much fun. Because it was a negative experience in my brain, they stuck around in there for a little bit longer. Also, it wasn't just the games themselves that I was leaving unfinished. Both of these games were part of a bigger task, clearing out my backlog. At the time of writing, I have 103 games in my backlog. That is 103 games I own but have not played or completed. By leaving the following unfinished, but not abandoning it, just leaving it kinda dangling in the air, not only am I leaving the task of beating the game incomplete, but I'm also halting my progress on the larger task of emptying out my backlog. So because I now have two different unfinished tasks that I've left incomplete, the urge to complete it is even stronger. And for Oracle of Ages, it's one of the mainline Zelda games. I mentioned earlier that I hope to eventually complete all of them. 
This means that if I didn't finish the game, I could never complete that larger, more substantial task. So yes, I probably could and would have dropped both of these games if they weren't part of a series that I liked. But I pushed through them both just so I could tick them off their respective list. In the end, after completing them both, was it worth it for me to finish these games instead of abandoning them? I think in this specific case for me, yes it was worth it, because I wanted to know how the story ended in Dying Light, and I was willing to stick it out. And because I want to eventually be able to say I've beaten every mainline Zelda game, I stuck that out as well. Playing these two games in close proximity to each other just made me curious as to why I was playing in the first place, which inspired me to make this video and research why. Maybe you've been in the same situation yourself. In general, if you aren't enjoying a game, then you shouldn't feel any guilt about dropping it. Your time is valuable and shouldn't be wasted on something lame that you don't like doing. If you made it to the end of this, then maybe hit the like button. And if you'd like to hear me talk some more about video games, then consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.